This is an ordinary AM FM radio. There are many like it, but this one is mine. Want to learn how to make it into a guitar amp too? Make sure to keep it locked on WBCR 420 FM for all the deeds. Back in the 90s, a friend of mine showed me this neat little trick on how to turn an AM FM radio into a fully functional practice amp with only one extra piece. This is a standard quarter inch guitar jack that you can get at any music shop. You can also get them online, but I feel like you miss out on the added charm that physically going into a shop and buying actual components gives you. Remember Radio Shack? Other things you will need are an AM FM radio, Try to find maybe an older one with a tone control, as these are easier to hack and are more versatile. You will also need a soldering iron and solder, as well as some wires. Shielded wires would be best, but are not necessary. Then, obviously, a guitar and a guitar cord. Now, all the amps I build are mostly battery powered, but with this GE Model 72650A, we have the luxury of dual power, which pretty much just means it has your mains leads which plug into your regular outlet in your house, but it also has a spot for a 9 volt battery, so it makes it truly portable. Another reason why I think it would be a good candidate for turning it into a portable little jam amp. Couple of things to note, you can see the date code there, it says 3134, which by GE's date codes from this time period means that it was made on the third day of the week which is a Wednesday on 81 is the year the second digit is the year so that makes it 1981 and then the 34 would be the 34th week and I looked it up and it was like August uh, 20th I believe so this was made in August 20th 1981 on a Wednesday the other thing I just noticed is that it has a little earphone output. So pretty much you could hook up headphones. It'll only be mono, but um, yeah, you could jam in peace. Or, well, you can jam while the other people around you are in peace, hopefully. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and pop this back off. I think I'm going to have a problem with where I'm actually going to install the jack. Uh, I was going to put it there, but I was looking at some pictures, and it appears that the transformer is right there. So I might just kind of drill into right here, because I think the board's under this, but I think there might be enough room. If not, I might have to take and probably drill a hole somewhere up here uh, away from the cord storage to actually install the plug. So far that's kind of one of the only things that I see that will actually throw a spanner in this whole deal. Alright, so there's everything all taken apart. I have to admit, this thing has uh, got me beat by a couple years as far as age. And uh, it definitely looks better inside of here than I'm sure I look on the inside. Pretty much right here we have our mains power coming in, going to a little tiny transformer. And then you got a half wave rectifier unit because there's only two diodes. And then that looks like a 16 volt, 1000 microfarad capacitor for smoothing. If we go ahead and look down, a couple of the other components are, this is the tuner. This is the AM antenna, which I believe is just a ferrite rod, which is wrapped in an inductor. So right here we have the actual AM FM chip. That's the IC. That's why it's called IC powered. Then we have things like the earphone jack, the power switch slash potentiometer, a couple of trim pots. This is the AM FM switch. This is going to be important. You also want to note the position and whereabouts of your AM antenna and what to look for to find it. 
Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to go ahead and diagnose and figure out where you're going to have to solder your wires. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. What you want to do is take something conductive and go ahead and find your IC and then go through and kind of see which one. You hear how it gave it that sound, that really hard feedback sound? That is what we're looking for. Now we go and we follow this trace all the way back and you will find that it actually hooks up to the AM antenna. So you can see here, there actually is a little hole with solder around it to kind of show where it is. So now all you do when you find this is try to break the trace from the antenna back to the IC. That's the first step. That's going to cut out your AM, FM, or excuse me, that's going to cut out your AM signal so you won't get all that feedback. See now on the other side you don't hear it. Okay, so next you're going to want to take an old headphone plug and cut it in half and uh, expose the wires. Now as far as the two sheathed wires, you're only going to use one of them because you only need one side of the signal. If you use both of them, it's going to probably send too much input signal. Because you want to keep this part, you want to keep your input signal down. And then what you do with this is you plug it into a phone and turn your phone about halfway up. That should give you the proper signal for what you're needing. Also on your phone, play some music. Okay, so now we have our antenna disconnected. We have the volume all the way up, just so we can hear. Now, remember this one's going to be the positive, and then the unsheathed one is always going to be your negative. And what I did, what you're supposed to do is, this is the switch right here. And so now, you want to get the negative to go on whichever one is the ground plane. And I figured this one on the outside was the ground plane because it connects to the switch. But then all you do is hook it up to the ground plane. This is kind of hard to do, so bear with me. We had it. So you put one on the ground plane. And basically, that tells you exactly where to solder these wires for your jack. So we'll do it again. I figured that this outside one was the ground plane, and then the last leg on the switch, it's got to get a good connection. That's a good song. I want to listen to it. So I'm come out in sympathy. Disease. Mark Knopfler is one of my favorites, by the way. Love Dire Straits. So now all we got to do is figure out what type of wire we're going to use and go ahead and get that jack soldered onto that switch and then figure out actually where I'm going to put it because I'm still not sure of where I'm going to put it. The jack, that is. I've got the jack. And God knows what else. Okay, so I figure for the positive end of the lead, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, solder it to the leg of the switch. Uh, you know, the one that I know is the actual input. I got some flux on there. So, we'll see how this... Okay. <sighs> that should do. Alright, so now I'm probably going to have a little bit of trouble doing uh, the ground wire. So I'm going to go ahead and tin it a little bit. And we'll go ahead... And snip it short. I wish I could get a nice good mechanical uh, joint here. 
but man, I just, I don't really see that happening. So, try to do something like that. Okay. Rising up our bow. Bumping the camera. Trying not to bump the camera. I think that should do. Slowly getting everything back together. I went ahead and removed the 9 volt battery lead. Uh, I could actually use that for something else. But, unfortunately, with this, I can't really figure out anywhere to put the jack. Oh, there's the jack, by the way. So, I think I'm just going to go ahead and mount it on this rear plate. And somewhere to where it's going to line up uh, where the 9-volt battery would go. And there's a little hole there. I can just kind of shoot the lead up through that hole. And then mount it to that. And I have to leave enough length of the lead so I can actually you know take this out and move it uh, so I can get the cord in and out okay so got it all put back together got our lead cut and we even got our jack hooked up uh, remember you want to make a good mechanical joint on these it's always going to help I mean we're going to solder it too but definitely make sure you got a good mechanical joint so let's go ahead and solder these Okay. Okay, it's always so easy to solder in front of the camera when you're bumping it and all that. But I think that'll do just fine. What I'm going to do is actually just kind of set it down in here and cut a hole in this. So it'll kind of extrude through that. And uh, to secure it, I don't know, I think I might just silicone it in there or glue it in there. I'll figure out something. But for demonstration purposes, I think it'll do for now. Well, all right. So we got it all hooked up. Kind of just got her hanging just for now, like I said, for demonstration purposes. It doesn't sound the greatest. And a lot of times they don't really sound the greatest. But the point of this is just kind of, you know, you know having a hobby and having fun with something. Uh, doing something a little bit different. Now it might be a little bit quiet, but it does have a pretty interesting tone.
Well, I guess that's all I got today. Thank you guys so much for watching. And uh, hope you had fun with this. And uh, yeah, get out there and make something. Why not?